Hey guys, as some of you may know, we just got back from five months backpacking all over India. If you haven't seen our India series yet, then make sure you go and catch up. It's a great insight into what it's really like to travel there, the places that we loved and well, didn't love them. I'll link the playlist at the end of this video and also put it in the description below, so you really have no excuse. Also, hitting that subscribe button really helps us out and it also means that you won't miss out on any future videos coming your way. This is Josh and I'm Erin. Follow us as we document our adventures around the world. We hope it will inform, inspire and entertain. I think one of the most common questions I get asked about travelling is, but Erin, how do you pack so light for such a long trip? Whether you're going for one week or one year, you're packing pretty much the same amount of stuff. Just because you're travelling doesn't mean you can't do washing. So for anyone who is completely lost with what to pack, I thought I'd put together this video to tell you exactly what to pack for a backpacking trip around India. So let's get into this. First things first, India is a really conservative country and as a foreigner, you are going to get stared at so much. I can't emphasize this enough. <laughs> You'll be asked for selfies on a pretty much minutely basis. If you do wear something super revealing or tight fitted or short, then it's just, I can't even imagine what would happen. As a woman especially, you just really need to tone it down. I usually just wanted to end up drawing as little attention to myself as possible because the stairs are intense. Before we arrived in India, I was not aware of how many climates India actually has. I mean, I knew it was huge, but it has it all. Beaches, mountains, deserts, cities, ski resorts, and everything in between. When you think India, you think hot, humid, sweaty. So when we headed north and up into the Himalayas, we really weren't prepared for the cold weather that we found there. So yeah, I guess my first top tip would be do a little bit of research into where you actually want to go in India first and then plan your packing accordingly. Or just do what we did, find the cheapest flight, rock up there with absolutely no idea what to do and just see where the wind takes you. Worked for us. I'm going to break this down into north and south. So basically above Delhi and below it. Firstly, something you're going to need no matter which part of India you're backpacking is a backpack. I use this 60 litre Van Gogh backpack. It zips all the way open on top, making it super easy to see what you're actually trying to get out and make it easier to access things without having to unpack your entire backpack. I have used so many different backpacks over the years and for me, this is a winner. Okay, South India. Now, this is where the logic of hot, humid, sweaty comes into account. I actually bought these pants in India and I wore them probably every single day. Floaty, light, comfortable, airy, they're amazing. They're also floor length and not tight fitted, which means they're super conservative and you can wear them anywhere. Also, this green jumpsuit. A friend of mine actually gifted this to me because since she did, I didn't take it off for a solid 10 days. It's so comfortable, so it's fantastic for trains. It's basically just trendy pajamas. Basically, floaty pants are gonna be your best friend. You can't pack enough of them. Big, loose, comfy shirt. A lot of places in India are really warm, but also very conservative. So even though you wanna basically just be naked, it's not really acceptable. So I would just wear a really small strap top and then stick a shirt over the top and you're good to go. For me, white t-shirts are a staple, staple, staple item. They go with everything. Under them, over them, in them, on them, you name it. You can wear a white t-shirt about a thousand different ways, I think. It's a must. On the topic of t-shirts, I would usually just pack a few loose ones, kind of like this or like this one. Something that can go with just about everything that you have that's super comfy, it's going to cover you up and you're not going to feel revealing or uncomfortable when you're out in public. The thing that has been with me on every single backpacking trip I have ever taken anywhere is my sarong. I love it. You can wear it as a skirt, as a dress, short, long, go to the beach, use it as a blanket. I even wore it as a scarf when we got up north because I was so cold and had nothing else. It's fantastic. I bought this on my first ever backpacking trip to Thailand eight years ago and it has been with me the entire time. This is something that I wouldn't usually take on another trip but I felt like in India it kind of was an essential. Just a nice, not disgusting dress. <laughs> in India you are pretty likely to get invited to an Indian wedding and you don't really want to rock up in your trendy pyjamas. 
as great as they are. It's got a really thin strap top. I never actually wore it without a t-shirt under, over, or with something over the top of me. But yeah, came in handy a lot more than I expected. Okay, next up is a cute little summer dress. Now, a lot of people think that when you're to India, you have to just like have your full legs covered constantly. And while that is the case in quite a lot of places, there are some places in the south, and even when you get to Delhi sometimes, that you can wear a slightly shorter dress and potentially even expose your knees. It's wild, I know. But this is perfect. It's got a t-shirt, so your shoulders are covered. It's a high neck. It came down to just above my knees. It's really loose, cotton, cool, cute, comfortable. Oh my God, I need to coin that phrase. I just summed up my traveling style in three words. Let's face it, chafing is real. These shorts are comfy, they're practical, they're versatile. I would wear them for hiking, for working out, for just generally walking around, going to the beach. They are short enough to slip on under a dress and then you don't have to worry about flashing someone when you sit down or if there's a big gust of wind, you're set. Okay, so Goa is a whole different kettle of fish. It's super touristy for both foreigners and Indians and it's also heavily Christian, which means it's a lot less conservative than other states within India. It definitely allows for that typical Southeast Asian summer wardrobe a bit more. Which means shorts. In Goa you can pretty much wear whatever the hell you want. Also means that bikinis are acceptable and thank God because Goa was one of the hottest places we went and I think if I wasn't allowed in the sea in my underwear, I would have melted. Melted. Also means that strappy tops, beach dresses, things that are slightly shorter, maybe more revealing, are all more acceptable. Just because you're in the south, don't think it's going to be hot all the time. When we got to Kerala, in the more hilly parts of the state, it does actually get pretty cold. Near the tea plantations, you're quite far above sea level. Pack a jumper, I just packed a simple sweatshirt like this. But now we're on to the warmer items that takes me to North India. Now, it actually depends on just how far north you're going and also what time of year you're gonna be going at. But if you're there in winter, so that's basically October to like March time, then it's gonna be cold. Our first stop in the north was Rishikesh and I was not prepared for how cold it actually was. All I had with me was like one pair of jeans and a really thin jumper. So if you are heading north, you're gonna need this stuff. Jeans. I feel like when you travel, you just end up wearing leggings and comfy stuff all the time. So wearing jeans kind of, you know, puts a bit of a spring in your step. I think when we arrived in Rishikesh, I pretty much wore these solidly for about two weeks. Um, and yeah, I smelt really, really bad. Leggings will come in handy so often. Also, I would consider taking an extra jumper if you know you're gonna be in the north for a while. I ended up buying another jumper and would wear it underneath my original jumper. It's that cold something that I didn't take but in hindsight would have actually been brilliant is one of those really small little puffer jacket things and it just packs down into a bag like this big it's just an extra layer and it's super warm and I think it would come in very very handy a hat I didn't take a hat but I wish I did it's really small stuff it in a side pocket and trust me even if you just wear it like twice when you're really cold worth it and if you don't even like it just chuck it away after i actually bought this scarf in rishikesh it's really big Ugh. it's super warm and it cost me like 150 rupees i would literally use this on a daily basis shoes number one essential flip-flops if you're staying in hostels they're really good to take to the shower or the bathroom with you and also train toilets so so handy now, I also took a pair of Birkenstock sandals, trainers. I wore these in the north of India a lot, actually. Just taking a pair of pumps like this, you can throw them on and off whenever they go with everything. They're comfy. It's just kind of a no-brainer for me. But yeah, my pumps and my thongs, I wore them the most out of anything. They were a daily necessity. Other just general essentials was I would never go to India without. Hand sanitizer. I mean obviously. Wet wipes, they come in so handy. Toilet paper. I think in about 70% of the places we stayed have no toilet paper, which paired with India's cuisine is not the ideal situation you want to be in. Yeah. I always, always, always have something in my bag. This stuff is going to save your ass. Literally. It's literally going to save your ass. Rehydration sachets. Stick them in a litre of water and you are good to go. Imodium. India's famous deli belly. 
need I say any more? <laughs> Another incredible thing I discovered a few years ago, Lush Shampoo and Conditioner Bars. Game changer. Just like a bar of soap, not only do they take up hardly any space in your bag, they weigh very little and they also last for ages. Something that I usually don't take on a trip, but Josh actually packed it and I don't think a day went by where we didn't use this bum bag. Hence why it's really, really gross now. We would literally just stick it on our front like this and it means everything is right in front of you. There's very little risk of someone taking this from you and everything's just so easy to get to. I can't recommend having a bum bag enough, especially for India. I think I'm a full convert now. Like, I love a bum bag. Other small items I would never go on a trip without. A pack of cards, a battery pack, headphones, sun cream and an adapter or as the two of us, we would always take an extension lead with us and one adapter. It's a little bit bulky, but it's a godsend. When you get to a hostel or a guest house, you only have one plug socket that you need to recharge everything you own and you only have 12 hours to do it. Okay, the number one, absolutely essential, cannot live without, every human should have one, the life straw bottle. Ah. First day we arrived in India, we were in Chennai, we ordered one off Amazon, I think it costs like 57 Australian dollars for two of them, that includes two bottles and two straws. What they are is just a normal water bottle but with this magical straw inside, which means you can fill up with tap water in any country in the world and it will make it safe and drinkable for you. You can literally fill these up from any water source except for the ocean. I felt like we were using hundreds of plastic bottles between us on a daily basis. That's definitely the biggest benefit for us is that they're so much more environmentally friendly. So you're saving yourself money, you're saving the planet, it's more convenient, there's no downside. This in my opinion is the absolute essential thing before you're going on a trip to India. I'm going to put the link to shop on Amazon in the description below so if you are interested then make sure to go check that out. My general loose rule when actually packing is to get everything you're thinking of taking with you, place it all out on your bed and then go through it item by item and say, can I wear you with multiple other items, multiple different ways to multiple different occasions every day for about a month? And if the answer is no, it's out. Okay, that pretty much sums it up. I really hope this has been helpful for you guys. And if you are planning a trip to India, then make sure you check out our previous episode, Top Tips for Backpacking India. It covers everything that we wish we had known before we went there. Plus our whole India series will really get you in the mood for your next adventure. Thanks so much for watching, please subscribe, maybe throw me a like. We'll see you again next Sunday for a full roundup of five months in India. The best places we visited and the top experiences we had along the way. You will not want to miss it. I'll see you then. Bye!